two years ago, I tried the original Marshall Emberton speaker and I was really quite impressed by it. It was relatively portable and it was a really good speaker at the time. So when I had the chance to try the Emberton 2, it was a bit of a surprise when I opened the box to see almost the exact same speaker inside. Hey guys, we have the Marshall Emberton 2 speaker with us today and let's just put it out there first. If you own the original Marshall Emberton, there's no real need to upgrade to this speaker. But if you don't and you're looking for something that's compact and still sounds good, well, then watch on. Before we get into the review, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. So. Let's talk design first. This looks almost identical to the original Emberton. You get grills on both the front and back, the same gold multi-directional control knob on the top, as well as the Bluetooth button and an LED indicator for battery. On the side, you get a USB-C charging port. The rest of the speaker is wrapped in a grain leatherish rubbery material which does feel rather nice to the touch. There are only two colours available for the Emberton 2 cream and black. And for a more durable, understated design, I think the black option wins out there. That being said, the cream is very nice as well. You just have to pay a bit more attention to make sure that it doesn't get dirty. Inside, you get two Class D amplifiers, two 2 inch 10 watt full range drivers and two passive radiators. The speaker itself is the exact same size and weight, 0.7 kg as the original. So, you might be thinking, what exactly has changed? For one, the speaker's more durable now, with an IP67 dust and water resistance rating. Additionally, there's also the ability to use multiple speakers together in what Marshall calls stack mode. It's a rather interesting take on having multiple of the same speakers together, but in a vertical stack rather than as a stereo pair. Given that the speaker is outputting somewhat in 360 audio, I can understand the reasoning behind this, but I don't think a lot of people are going to be getting multiple Emberton 2 speakers just for this. This feature is activated via the Marshall Bluetooth app, which supports this speaker by the way, and the app is really simplistic. You get three EQ presets, the ability to turn on stack mode, firmware updates, and that's about it. Connectivity has also been improved slightly, from Bluetooth 5.0 to Bluetooth 5.1, although the speaker still only supports the SPC codec. But the other big improvement is in battery life. Marshall has somehow managed to squeeze out an additional 10 hours of battery life while keeping the weight and the size the same, with 30 plus hours now in the Emberton 2 as opposed to 20 plus hours in the original Emberton. Seeing as the size and weight didn't change, this is honestly quite impressive. A 20 minute charge will give you 4 hours of battery life and it takes around 3 hours of charge to get up to 100%. Unfortunately, Marshall has decided against including a microphone here, so there is still no voice controls. It's physical controls via the speaker or your device only. Long press and hold on the multi-directional knob to turn the speaker on or off. Push the knob up for volume up, push the knob down for volume down. Push it to the left to skip tracks backwards and push to the right to skip tracks forward. As for sound, it's been a while since I tried the original Emberton, but from memory, these sound almost the same. They do get quite loud, loud enough for the house at least. Outdoors, you might need to go up to 50 to 70% depending on how noisy the surroundings are. Pushing it too high though does start to change the sound with a bit of distortion and such introduced. On a moderate volume and with the original Marshall sound preset though, the overall sound is warm and lush with a nice distinctness to vocals. There is bass present, although it's not quite as thumpy and as deep as other speakers in this range. There is a noticeable boost in the highs, which is nice as they are crisp and clean with a good amount of energy. 
At higher volumes though, there is a tinge of harshness creeping in. I would say that a comfortable volume would be around 60%. Anything higher and you do start to notice the sound changing. Soundstage isn't too bad either. It's quite wide and you do get a good amount of depth thanks to the way that sound is outputted through the speaker. The Marshall Ambiton 2 is a fun party speaker that looks great in almost every setting and, you know, at moderate volumes, it sounds really good. Seeing as there's no price increase from the original Ambiton speaker at $189 US dollars or $299 Singapore dollars, I think it's a great move by Marshall. People who have the original Ambiton have no real need to upgrade, but if you are looking for a portable speaker and you don't already own the original Ambiton speaker, then this is a great choice to look at. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Marshall Ambiton 2 speaker. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe to us and like this video. Till next one, see you guys!